Bell's Consortium Tip. I'm going to give you something that most people really like to hear about, how to process objections more effectively. What I call it is isolating the customer's concern. By the way, concern is a really nice way of saying objection. So if you hear me say concern, they're both the same thing. So let's talk about it. If you recall, and I just want to bring this back briefly, when you drive someone's enthusiasm letter up to a 10, your obligation is to ask the customer to buy. Now I hope they say yes, and you gotta promise me something. If they do, write them up. But if they don't, which is a high percentage chance, not just you're not gonna sell it, but they're gonna say no initially. They're gonna go down to a seven. When they go down to a seven, remember, we don't wanna add stress then. That's the old seesaw of stress and enthusiasm. What we wanna do is reduce stress. So I'm gonna give you a three-step procedure. And when you get it, I'm gonna ask you, if you wouldn't mind, to practice it after you hear the tape. If you need to hear it again, if you need to write it down, do what you need to do. But there's three basic steps. I'm going to tell you the steps first, elaborate on them. I'm going to tell you why they're important. Then I'm going to model them for you. Step number one. One is acknowledge the concern. If you go to all the survey companies, they're going to tell you that all the customer really wants is for you to acknowledge the concerns. They feel as if you don't even hear what they have to say. And I'm going to give you the reason why. Because years ago, years ago, we were all trained that if a customer gave you a concern or an objection, make believe you didn't hear it. And we actually believed that worked. The only problem was, the customer didn't like it. And that's the fact. So you have to acknowledge it. Once you've acknowledged it, go to step number two. Step number two is give the customer a justifiable reason why you'd like to talk about it. You see, just to ask why right then, it's too abrupt. You have to have a reason why the customer would want to interact with you. Give them one. We call it a justification. That brings us to step number three. Step number three is a drill down. We want to ask them essentially why they feel the way they do. If you recall, if I know why somebody feels the way they do, or why they want a car and things they want in there, what's these motives about a car, I know how to show them the vehicle. I know how to present the vehicle. Over here on this side, if I know what their objection is and why it's an objection, I know exactly the justification to take out of the justification bill and apply to that situation. Just the right one. Not the generic one that I learned in a training class. The one that suits the customer's needs, keeping me customer-centered. So here's how it might sound. Now let's, let's choose an objection. The objection might be you're not giving me enough for my training. It can be whatever you want it to be because the steps work the same. You're not giving me enough of my trade. So I'd say something to the effect of, if you don't see the value in what we have to offer, we'd never expect for you or any of our guests ever to take advantage of it. Fair enough? The net result of that is a reduction in stress, because we're not attacking it. Now we go over to justification. When we evaluate a person's trading, we evaluate it by, based on three different sources. One is the books that are out that tell us the current values of the cars, auctions, and also what sells and doesn't sell on our market. Then we take that information, we utilize all of it, and we give you what we feel, feel is a fair investment. Does that sound logical? Now what we've done there is we've given them a reason why we did what we did and why we said it. It just wasn't something, a swag, right out of the air. Now we go to the third step. The third step is a drill down. With all due respect, what I'd really like to understand is why you feel the way you do. So obviously you have some reasons for feeling this way. Would you mind sharing with me what they are? As soon as they give you a reason, drill down. It's time for a conversation. Really listen with your entire body. Write down. You ask permission to take notes, take notes. When you're done, repeat it back. Make sure you understand what their concerns are, but more importantly, why they have a concern. Then go to your justification there. And pick and choose a nice, juicy justification that makes complete sense to you, to the use it, to the customer who will relate to it. That's how you process an objection. That's how you isolate an objection. Why are we trying to overcome an objection when all we know is that they're not getting enough of their training? There must be a reason why. And that why is the secret to your sale and your gross profit. If you master this technique, you too will be a professional for life.